Hey everybody, this week we're moving on to taking a look at the Corley Love Sonnets of Philip Sidney and William Shakespeare. I'd like for you to keep in mind all of the discussion and reading that you did on uh, Sidney's defense of poesy because uh, we're going to put him uh, to test and see if he follows his own prescription that poetry should teach and delight to prompt virtue. And we're going to look at several examples from his sonnet sequence, Astrophil and Stella. And it's an extremely important sonnet sequence for uh, the rest of the English re Renaissance and in English literature in general. Uh, but it's, a, uh, it's just an interesting story as well because you have this uh, forlorn lover and unrequited love. And he is sort of obsessed with a girl as she rejects him. And the question we might ask about that is how exactly does this prompt virtue in the readers through teaching and delighting. So there's more information about that in the lecture video. Uh, so check that out and we'll dig into it uh, a little bit more there about how we want to read these sonnets. I've also included reading of Shakespeare's sonnets because um, I think it's a really valuable text as well for understanding not just the English Renaissance but also the uh, the role of sonnets in poetry and understanding Shakespeare as a multifaceted writer. His sonnets are significant alongside his plays and it's important to read those as well, but they're different. Uh, most of the first group of sonnets are written to a young man and there's a lot of questions about what that might mean in terms of Shakespeare, in terms of who the young man is, in terms of his sexuality and other things that people have continued to deal with, or if he's dealing with just a bigger picture of what love looks like, uh, especially as it is in relationship to time. So uh, that would be an interesting thing to read uh, for you as well. As you're going into the discussion board post, I don't want you to try to just answer the question, right? Or the answer, the, the, the prompts are there to generate thoughts that you might want to explore as you're reading through these things. So don't view them as a, if I click all the, if I answer all these questions, then I'm going to get the answer quote unquote right. And that's what he's looking for. That's not it at all. It is taking those prompts, coming up with an idea, and then writing a good, healthy paragraph about it, essentially. So uh, this should be coming more familiar to you. But if you have questions, feel free to leave me or send me an email, and I'll be happy to take a look at it uh, to give you some feedback prior to this to the assignment being turned in or after the assignment's turned in. I mean, that's what the grade is supposed to be, is giving you feedback on what you've written and how you can improve your writing and if you want to revise or if you want to uh, just keep continue to grow as a writer that's what that feedback's for so emphasize again make sure you're reading my feedback in terms of the midterm i am working through those now i uh, should have those back to you here in the next couple of days uh, as i mentioned in the last video it takes a little while with the midterms because they're a longer assignment but I want to continue to work with you on developing your ideas uh, as we go through it. So in the same way as the discussion board post where the feedback I'm giving you is not just here's why you didn't do well in the test or here's how, why you did do well, but here are the things that you can continue to do to keep growing as a writer. Here are the things that you need to change. So I hope that's helpful for you and I look forward to hearing your thoughts on the sonnet sequence. And as I mentioned, and I will mention every email, every uh, video, email me if you have questions, if you have concerns, cmoody at aum.edu. Talk to you soon.